this question, I think, is a very simple one. Can you explain the role the district reps or, uh, say, the county council members would have under the leadership? I think this can be answered very quickly. The question probably is more about the relationship between the county executive and the county council. So explain the role of the county council member would have under your leadership. I think this one first about this is something I'm proud of because um, it takes a special skill set. You have to know how to build a consensus with your council members. I've been a council member when we had a very confrontational and counterproductive relationship with an executive. I've been a council person when we had a very good working relationship, and I've worked on that very hard as a mayor. We do. I. You have to have an executive that realizes that they don't always get their way. Um, it is not a, a. It's not government by fiat. It has to be government by consensus. And uh, if, you, if you include people and you share power, you can do that. Now, the other thing I think the county executive has to do is they have to remind the county council people that they are not 11 separate fiefdoms. We have to keep the big picture involved. One of the things I think that the charter should have done differently is I think some of the council people should have been at large because you would have had at least a few people that would not be representing particular districts. I think that's important. But because we don't have that, we have to make sure that we don't default to a system where everybody wants to divide up <coughs> the pie in 11 exactly equal ways. Or maybe this person is the council president and they get more than an equal share. We've got to keep our, our, our eye focused on the big picture. Because it would be a tragedy if we switched to this, this new system, which is supposed to consolidate people. But then we have 11 separate strategies would be, would be completely counterproductive. And I think it, the county executive can help set that tone uh, very early on, and that's what I hope to do. I have five things I want to accomplish in four years. I don't have time to take a response. So November 3rd, on a full council together, and we're going to meet every week, and they're going to help determine who's going to be the audit. That's not going to be me and my team then picking people and then going to council and ask for approval. They are going to be involved from day one because we do not have the time to act as individuals which we have to do as a team. The county executive is going to have to make some uh, executive decisions, but a collaborative approach is the only way we're going to solve the county's problems. Um, I expect and hope that it's the council council reps can help identify the elements of the yeah. networks of people and nonprofits and corporations and the businesses that are going to knit together our community and make successful economic development happen and make a, a new kind of accounting out of business. As an independent, I, I see no problem in working with the new council, whether they're Democrats, Republicans, or independents. We have been put there by the people to do the people's work. I will not accept any personal agendas or party agendas or self-serving agendas. And when they understand that we're all working for the greater good, I feel very confident that I can get a consensus that I've done my whole life. I started with no money. I've been to banks, I've been turned down plenty of times, I've had to rephrase how I made my deals, I've had to, to renegotiate, and I've been able to be successful. I think I can figure that one out. Thank you. Thank you. Chuck, don't repeat this, but most of the council candidates uh, left, they got bored with us. Uh, so if we talk long enough, the council may just disappear. It's going to be a very strong council. They, uh, they approved the budget, they approved major appointments, they approved the way forward. Um, so, you know, I mentioned you know, it's not a small thing. Uh, I, I'd say to each one of them each month, you know, where do you want us to meet in your district? And uh, making sure we take time to tour the most important spots of Wakewood or Mount Pleasant or Kinsman Road and, and so forth, Euclid, uh, so that they have a sense of uh, propriety uh, and uh, I should say proprietorship in, in the way forward. Thank you. And the last question from our audience is about the system of checks and balances, which is a very important question in this climate. So what system of checks and balances will be implemented in the new time of government 
please explain how accountability will be enforced. I'll start. Well, first of all, the council and the executive are two different branches, and that is the foundation for uh, checks and balances. So, first of all, the structure of the county government has checks and balances. Now, I'm going to go back to the technology I was talking about earlier. It has lots of ramifications because it is what's going to open the door to transparency and accountability. Online analysis of what's going on. Here are the vendors and how much money they've got, and here are their contributions to whoever. It's going to be open and transparent. So I think technology can open the door to accountability and checks and balances by, by the media and the media. I think the question puts a focus on the major deficiency of the charter, and that is that the charter is set up so that the county council is really the only check on the executive. The problem is, and all of you that are council people know this, it's very difficult for part-time council people to be effective watchdogs on the administrate day-to-day -day administration of a giant bureaucracy that's over 8,000 uh, employees and over a billion dollars. So there needs to be uh, some institutional support like a, a very strong inspector general's office to make sure that there's a true check on the executive. It can't be left up solely to the council. <coughs> Mr. Fitzgerald hit it, hit the nail right on the head. The only means of accountability that we as citizens have in this situation is to recall or re-elect uh, or de-elect the executive. The council doesn't have adequate check and balance authority with it. By the executive keeping four of the council people on his side, he can do whatever he wants. It's up to the citizens of Kaiser County to elect the most honest and the person with the most integrity so that maybe the council and the executive can create some effective checks and balances in this system. I can tell you that the <coughs> charter, I believe, addresses it very well. I believe that the county executive does have to have a level of integrity uh, in order to be able to set the example. When he hires in the CFO, when he hires in a law director, these are people that will have authority that should be watching them. You ask for transparency. You let me, you're going to get transparency because that's what you want, that's what you get. I'm working for a dollar a year. I'm investing over a million dollars in four years. I want a return on that investment. So I can tell you for sure that that return is going to be a better value of accounting. Thank you, sir. Senator, uh, I'm not going to direct your elected officials uh, because you understand this. 98% of uh, checks and balances and accountability. Uh, are traced back to who you are. Uh, you know that every day of the year you make decisions uh, that are either appropriate or not, uh, favorable to the public interest or not, and you know that so often you have that discretion. So that's first, the council will play a major role, and certainly in this atmosphere, uh, law enforcement and media uh, are going to be omnipresent. 